tell us what does that mean? That means that approximately 4.5 billion years ago, based yeah. on sort of the, the general consensus in certain circles today, okay, that they think that 4.5 billion years ago, yeah. the sun was sort of came to be through uh, stellar dust okay. packing together via gravity into the sun, and okay. then. In 4.5 billion years, it will expand to the point to consume the Earth, and the Earth okay. will so, uh, be consumed at that point. So that's our sun? Yes, that's our sun. Because there are different suns? There are different suns. Okay, so now, you, I asked you, are you an atheist? You said no. No. Are you an agnostic? You said no. No. Are you a deist? Kind of. Well, Theist, theist? Theist. Well, I, I think a lot of the kind of things that you can search for, you can't... When you think you found an answer, yeah. that's when you found an answer. It's not... Hmm. Like, you, you, if you think that you are an atheist and you believe, I've never seen evidence of God, yeah. I think you're missing... You're falling into the trap of thinking you know everything. Thinking wow. that you, you are enlightened as do, to... Do you, know, do you know what we call that in Islam? How do you call that in Islam? Arrogance. Arrogance, yes. To, yes. For one, to be like, I know it all. I, you know, do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. It's a part of our religion to say I don't know. Yeah. Do you know that? It's a, it's, it's a part of knowledge to say I don't know. Now, you are, let's, let's talk about, like, you obviously have some kind of a belief in a higher power, shall I say? Yes. Yeah? Can you, if we made it more personal for you today, would you be open to that if we brought evidence? If I brought evidence? If I brought evidence. Oh, evidence. Yeah, oh. If I brought evidence that Let's get this power yeah. to be more personal. I don't know what you mean. Okay, so for example, you believe in a higher power, right? Yeah. Do you give this, this higher power attributes? Or is he just a higher power that's there? I don't know nothing about him. It's, I don't think I can know very much about him. I think, I think if I make assumptions, yeah. then I will sort of fall into the trap of thinking that I know. Good. So the best thing to do is to know it from the source. Okay. Because otherwise, like you said, you, you jump to assumptions and assume. Yep. And this is where Islam is really beautiful because a lot of people who go and worship idols, yep. they fell for this because they had an innate disposition, which is the fitrah. We believe we are all born with the fitrah. Have you heard of this before? Uh, no. I okay, not. the fitrah is an innate disposition yes. that can help you find God. You are okay. programmed to find Him. Yeah. Yep. And what people do is they tend to want to serve that God but because they don't have any religion or a way of life, they tend to take that into their own hands and say, I'll make a statue and say, this is God. Or, yeah. or this is a part of God. Or this is the person I go to, uh, this, uh, to God to, through, yeah? So Islam came and many religions came to send this message to human beings so they can have a direct relationship to what God wants from them, sure. rather than thinking. So what is the best method? That you go and buy your mom a present or you buy a present your mom wants? Buy a present your mom wants. So, that's what Islam is. Islam is there to tell you what God wants from you. That's why you have people saying, oh, my heart is clean, you know, this, that, well, like, that's good. If your heart is clean, it'll resonate to your outer appearance, yeah? So, heart being clean is good, but we need to look at what God wants from us, okay? Before we go into that, let's open a verse in the Quran, let's see, because we believe this whole Quran is, a, is from God and he has a message. Yeah. Deep inside you, I would ask you to make a prayer. Yeah. Say, God, if you're there, show me a sign. Okay. And, and open a random verse. Where's my Quran? And tell me which chapter it is. Uh, Surah 7. Chapter 7, yep. What verse? Pick a verse. 92. Alright, let's go to... So it is Surah... Surah Al-Araf. Okay, 92, yeah? Okay. 92. Okay, here we go. Okay, those who den denied Shuaib became as if they had never dwelt there in their homes. Those who denied Shuaib, they were the losers. Then he, Shuaib, turned from them and said, O oh my people, I have indeed conveyed my Lord's message to you and have given you good advice. Then how can I grieve for a disbelieving people? And we sent no prophet to, to any town and they denied him. But we see these people with suffering from extreme poverty or loss in wealth and loss of health and calamities so that so they might humble themselves and repent to Allah then we change the evil for the good until they increase in number and in wealth and said our fathers were touched with evil loss thereof 
and calamities and with good prosperity, so we seized them all of sudden while they were unaware. This is very interesting. Yes, it's very You know topical. why? Because you know what he's talking about? He's talking about exactly what we're talking about now. Yeah. Do you know what he's talking about? He's talking about Shuhaib, the prophet, yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. Who is being sent to a nation. And what, is our, what are we talking about today? We believe in God, but if we do not have messengers, prophets, messengers with scriptures sent to us, how could I know what God wants from us? So here is talking about many instances in the Quran where he's talking about that these prophets were sent to redirect the people to the true worship and the way God wants them to worship Him. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And this is what Islam is about. Now, in a nutshell, what we believe is the following. We believe God exists. There's a higher power. Now, if He exists, you have to ascribe attributes to Him. Because we cannot say, oh, there is a higher power there, but He's not the um, all-knowing. Yeah? Or he's not the all uh, deserving of worship, or he's not the most wise. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So I get what it's a bit hot, I'm going to take this off. It is so, so the <laughs> thing is, what we're saying in a nutshell is that we cannot believe that. Before I came to Islam 10 years ago, I was like you. I, I, was, I, was, I was a theist, yeah? I believed in a higher power. But at one point I had to say to myself, well, hold on a second. How can I believe that this God created me but gave me no purpose? It's an insult against him. Because, for example, your back has a purpose, your trainers have a purpose, the t-shirt you wear has a purpose. How could it be? Wouldn't it be a great insult for us to come and say, the person who, made the, who, the person who designed the plane, he just did it for, 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 for no reason, he was bored. Would it be an insult or praise to him? That really depends on the context, but more or less, I would say more insult. Good. So what we're saying is, how could it be then, the one who's created the heavens and the earth, the very sun that you're looking at here, which is maybe a speck compared to the other suns in the universe. How can we say that he exists but he gave us no purpose? We have to have a purpose. Well, this, this is something that I think about a lot. Yeah. I'm not, I've heard what you're saying before. I'm not willing to jump all the way there yet. Okay. Uh, okay. Any, any reason why? Is there, is there anything specifically stopping you? More that, well, I, I'm thinking. Cause I, there is a reason, but it's a bit—it's a bit hard for me to. Oh, please take your time. Think about it. Take your time if if, if you okay. if you. Feel. I would say that if you believe in, or based on how, if there if there is no preordained purpose, then I think it is instructive to see what people make of their lives without having a, a purpose told to them. And I think that if there is no purpose, then it is very easy to see who people are and who they, who they decide to become. Because many times there are people who are righteous and just and like, uh, well yes, we'll, we'll just yeah. use those two. And there are people okay. who <clears throat> won't will decide to be exploitative and be yeah. just... Okay, so you see the thing here is this, yes. yeah? You, you said your name is John? Yes, John. Okay, John. There, there will always have to be a purpose. There is an impossibility. For example, if someone comes and says, I have no purpose, I'll say, that's your purpose. That's your purpose. Sure. So the thing is, we are bound to have a purpose. Yes. Because the fact that for one... And by the way, people can still make those distinctions. For example, being good, bad, righteous. That has got nothing to do with the purpose. Okay. The reason we ascribe that to God Almighty is because He has to be the all-knowing. Yes? He has to be, because there's knowledge in the universe. He has to be the all-knowing. Okay. He has to be the most wise. Yeah? yeah? He has to be, for example, the most merciful, the most just. There's attributes that He has to attain. He has to be innately a part of Him. Why? Because at the end of the day, without those, then all we're doing is just <laughs> affirming that there's a higher power. Okay, and that's it. What do you mean, that's it? What's, why am I here? Where am I going? Who created me? Why do I look like this? Yeah. Why do I have to be like this? Why do I get angry? Why do I have a, um, for example, an attraction towards the opposite gender? Why do I feel like this? You know, why do I get angry sometimes? Why, why do I act arrogant sometimes? Yeah. These are things that I'm born with. I don't have no choice. I didn't choose my name. I didn't choose the way I look. I didn't choose my height. I mean, he didn't choose to look handsome, but he was born like that, you know? <laughs> so the point I'm trying to say is that we are all bound to we, like follow a way of life. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So that's the reason why when we read that verse, when we opened it, it's talking about messengers. Because what it's telling you is that God is sending these messages to get you reconnected and have a relationship with them. 
Do you get what I'm trying to say? He sure. wants you to have a relationship with him, and when you have that relationship, to then worship him how he wants him, you to worship him. And we believe in the Quran is this the only message that hasn't been changed and altered, and it has miracles within itself to prove it. Okay. That's why I spent like 10 years ago, I, I came to Islam, I studied it for about two and a half years. Different religions. The Quran was the only one that stood out. Number one, it's preserved, it's not changed. Number two, it has miracles that, that you can examine yourself. Okay. So yeah, like, like, what would stop you from taking that, like, I wouldn't say a leap, but a conscious, rational, logical leap to affirming that there's a power and he has these attributes? Well, I think when you make an assumption yeah. about anything, yes. what's important about the assumptions that you make yeah. is what the assumptions let you let you know. Okay. What, not wait, because you, you know that you're making assumptions, so you don't know for sure that you know, but you know that the assumptions tell you things. Okay. And I think I already do make those assumptions because those assumptions lead to lead to the, the right interpretation, I think. Okay, when you say assumptions, what do you mean? So just so I understand. I mean like, if, if you're doing logic, yes. and you want to make an argument, then you make a, You can say that, if these things are true, then this follows. Yes, conclusion or follows, yes. You can say like... All, 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 men, all yeah. men are mortal. Adam is a man, sure. men are mortal. Adam is uh, mortal, Adam sorry. Is more, yeah, something like that. So, the assumption in this case would be that all men are mortal. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And okay, so we were talking about yeah. you saying that. So, so what's stopping you from taking that leap that this higher power must have these attributes? Well, no, I think uh, if there was a higher power, he would have these attributes. Good, good. Okay, so so you see now what you're doing is you're inclining towards the the belief of Islam because what it is is what differentiates Islam from many other religions the following. We say God is all knowing. Yeah. He, look, the verse in the Quran. Yeah. Okay. Surah Ikhlas. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ اللَّهُ السَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَقُلْ لَهُ كُفُّ وَنَّهَدْ Say he, Allah is one, self-sufficient. He does not beget, nor is he begotten, and there is nothing like unto him. So when we give God Almighty attributes of, for example, the all-powerful, can there be a moment of time he loses his power? Good. So now we've negated what? Idol worship, Jesus being God, um, Ganesh, all the religions in the world, you say, bye-bye. Because number one, what? He is the all-powerful, the all-knowing. Can an all-knowing being at one moment be ignorant? No. Good. Now again, we are, when Christians come and say, well, Jesus was God. Well, okay, well, did he know that when he went to the fig tree, he didn't know that it was, a season, it was not the season for the figs. Yeah? So, so what we say is we then deny that and say, well, hold on a second. This is why Islam's monotheism is so unique. Because God Almighty is one and unique. There is nothing like him. He is self-sufficient. So that's the reason why I would personally say, if you think about it, in a nutshell, you are more inclined to the direction of your God being Allah. Because Allah is not a human being. There's nothing like him. Anything that you think of him is created. Because anything that you have in your mind is, is created. So yes. it's more inclined to the belief of uh, Muslims as Islam. Yes, well, I think uh, Muslims have a lot of wisdom. Like their, their way of life is very, is very, uh, like I, I know a lot of Muslim yeah. people, they're my best friends. They, yeah. they have a lot of... Like me. Yeah. I mean, now, like us, we're your best friends. Now friend that we started talking, yes. yes. Uh, they have a lot of uh, good ideas about how to live their lives. Yes. Um, so I, I agree with you. Yeah. I, I, I've been looking into yeah? Islam for quite a while. Wow. And I, I will be reading the book you gave me. No problem. John, any more questions? No, no. Yeah? Thank you, Ali. Can I try a glass? Yeah. <laughs> and, and also, John, it seems like, you know, when you're saying... Um, how do I look? I'm inclining, I'm inclining how do, towards how do I look? something, right? You yes. say, I'm inclining towards it. It seems as if you were almost describing that you're, you feel like you're... Next time, as alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Like a journey that you're... you're Thank taking. you. Sure. Yes. I think I looked good enough. And, 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 so. and this experience is part of your journey because what you're doing is that... You know, sometimes it's not the conversation that's going to make you, you know, it's going to make you... How are you, Halawi? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know, you're looking at the room like, wow. You know, it's like, yeah. it could be very small things, so it's not... I love watching. This conversation is just going yeah, to be part of that journey. 
Sure. But, Allah. Um, and it, for some people it's abrupt, yeah. but for some people it's very gradual. It, it's always very gradual. Yeah. So yeah, thank you.